Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Tuesday, January 26th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Minnesota game is in 219 days. The game against Michigan in 305 days. But today, we're not talking football. We are talking basketball. Chris Holtman and the Basketball Buckeyes have three straight road wins against top 15 teams for the first time in program history. Ohio State has won at number 15 Rutgers, number 14 Illinois, and now number 10 Wisconsin in their last three true road games. Now they have a chance to build on the resume at home Wednesday night against in a rescheduled game against Penn State. My guest today is Bat- Buckeye Scoop's Matt Goldman. He hosts the Anything But Football podcast along with Mick Walker. Matt, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Tom. Uh, you know, the, the Buckeyes picked up a really big win over the weekend at Wisconsin. I feel like I, I have, I think I've picked, predicted the last like three or four games incorrectly, all four of them. Uh, you know, they, they lose to Purdue last week in a game that they probably feel like they should have won. Then they go on the road to Wisconsin, which is a place, you know, the Badgers are a very good team this year. That is the, the Cole Center is a place where they just have not had a lot of success over the years. And then they win comfortably. What to you was the biggest takeaway? I mean, there's, there was a lot for Ohio State fans to be happy away about coming out of that game. What to you that will, was the biggest takeaway from that game over the weekend? We saw the EJ Liddell show is how I like to put it. I thought this is where now EJ has been stepping up. He's been consistently growing throughout the season. I think the Illinois game kind of showed that where EJ Liddell, his ceiling can become the highest, especially he had a career high of 26 points and seven rebounds. But EJ is now consistently putting up these numbers every week. And I think it's starting to show that this team doesn't just have Dwayne Washington as their main score. They also can go down low with EJ Liddell. And then they have c- contributors such as Kyle Young. Now CJ Walker's back. Justice Suen's also putting in some guard play with Jimmy Soto's out. So I think we're seeing, besides EJ Liddell's performance, we're seeing a very balanced Buckeyes lineup, especially when C.J. Walker wasn't supposed to play, but he did end up playing a little bit uh, for Coach Holtman in the squad. But overall, Buckeyes just looked great. I was very surprised. I think a lot of the students here at Ohio State were also very surprised because I was watching with a couple of friends in the dorms, and we were all just like, wow, Wisconsin's like really good. I, you, you watched them this year when they played Michigan. That game was unbelievable. And you're thinking to yourself, this Wisconsin team's pretty legit. The Big Ten's pretty deep this year. And then when Ohio State just went in there and they were capitalizing on threes, Justin Arns was even hitting some big shots. You just could see that this Ohio State team was energized, especially after that Purdue game that they uh, lost ten with 10 seconds to go, Jaden Ivey's big three. Yeah, and, and I mean, you mentioned there C.J. Walker being back. Chris Holtman on his radio show on Monday made it sound like he is still kind of a little touch and go with that hand. If he gets banged up again, he may be back off the court again for an extended period. But how big was it for this team to have him back on the floor? I mean, you mentioned it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, he didn't play 38 minutes or anything like that. But how big is it for that this team if CJ Walker can come back and play some kind of a role for them? It's great for the Buckeyes, especially because they were missing their true ball handler these past few games. Now it was Dwayne Washington just assuming bringing up the ball for the Buckeyes. And it just didn't look right. And the Buckeyes were struggling. You saw in the Purdue game bringing up the ball sometimes. And we also saw in the Illinois game that it got close at the end when they were, had a comfortable lead and then bringing the ball up, it was just a little tough for the Buckeyes, especially with Justin Soon, who's not used to playing a one or two on the on the court. And then Ju- Justin Arns hasn't really shown that he's a true point guard. So having CJ Walker back was such a big help for the Buckeyes. Yes, he had a limited role, but he was able to help the Buckeyes just contribute. He's that guy who brings the assist in. He's able to bring some energy and some leadership also on the court that the Buckeyes were missing. And Kyle Young was kind of their main leader during that little run they had, especially on the road with Rutgers, Wisconsin, Illinois, those big wins, top 25. Now, Walker was back. Jimmy Sotos, though, another point guard. They've been missing both of them for quite a few weeks now. He is still out with a shoulder injury. You know, I mean, Walker, we mentioned maybe, like, he's back now. That's not a guarantee that he's back healthy the whole rest of the year. How big will that be whenever Jimmy Sotos, we don't know when it's going to happen, but how crucial is that for them to get Jimmy Sotos back at some point to have a little bit more depth there in that backcourt? I think it's significant because Jimmy was playing some of his best ball right before he got hurt, especially in that Rutgers game. I was there covering for Buckeye scoop and he started off the Buckeyes big and that's what got them to their uh, first, their first run. I think they went on a 10 to run and he had six straight points for the Buckeyes. So he was able to bring some uh, energy as well. And he was also able to show his versatility, especially in offense defense. He was able to take up Jacob young on uh, Rutgers, one of the best guards in the country. And he was able to stop him. And Jacob young was limited to like six points that game. So Jimmy Sotos brings just more depth in the backcourt for the Buckeyes, especially now that 
we saw Dwayne Washington having to play more minutes and also Justice Suing bringing up the ball. So I think just Jimmy Soto's just being there is really big for the Buckeyes. And then if Jimmy Soto's is back playing his role that he was playing, especially during that Rutgers game, and then CJ Walker's there, now we even have Michi Johnson as more depth. I think the, this Buckeyes backcourt can be pretty scary when it comes to March. Yeah, and th- it feels like a theme that's developing here is this team's pretty darn good. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that could sort of be trending in the right direction where things could be getting better in the lead up to March. One of the other things, Seth Towns, I mean, he's definitely been making an impact, especially in the offensive end of the floor. Holtman said Monday, he's still not able to practice all the time. He's still not 100%. You know, if he can continue to get better, if he can continue to contribute more, you get Michi Johnson maybe contributing more as he gets a little bit more experience at the college level. You know, this seems like, this is a very good team, and they have not yet hit their ceiling. Yeah, this Buckeyes team, uh, you mentioned earlier before when we were talking before the show that they're top five in offensive efficiency. The, these guys are shooting the lights out. They've proven that they are very dangerous on offense and that defense is their place that they need to fix. But I think Ohio State hasn't hit their ceiling yet, and especially with Seth Towns, who can add some, uh, add some long-range shooting. He's been shooting from D pretty well lately. He had 11 in the Illinois game. I believe two of those were three pointers. So Seth Towns has shown that he's not going to be the Ivy League player that we saw in 2018. That's just not possible. I believe it's 2017, excuse me, with the knee injury. But Seth Towns has just shown that there is more depth for the Buckeyes than we thought there was going to be. We didn't expect him to come out and have this role. Yes, he, it's weird because this Buckeyes team is pretty balanced from the backcourt to the front court, And I think that we didn't know where Seth Towns was going to play and what role he was going to be in. But when he's out on the court, he's just another weapon for the Buckeyes, especially from deep and down low as well. And he's been shooting those mid-rangers as well that we saw just EJ. We only thought EJ Liddell was shooting those, but now Seth Towns is able to add in there. So I think with Seth Towns, when he can get to 100% healthy or what can Coach Holman considers him 100% healthy, this should be pretty fun to watch for Buckeye fans. We've just spent the last like five minutes talking about guys who are kind of banged up or out completely right now. And this looked like it was going to be a week when they were all going to be able to rest up and finally maybe get a little healthier. And then the Big Ten Michigan has shut down for a couple weeks. The Big Ten dropped a Penn State game in Ohio State's lap. They will host Penn State on Wednesday night. Ta-da! Extra basketball, free bonus basketball. Um, and then they have Michigan State on Sunday night. Those are two winnable games. And pretty much to me, must wins heading into the Iowa game. If you want to be in, I don't know if the big 10 championship is still in reach or not. They, they're well within range of being a top two, top three seed. I think they are three games back of Michigan in a loss column right now, two back of Iowa and one back of Wisconsin and Illinois. One that gets interesting. They only have one road game left against any of those teams. That, that that's that Iowa game. They, they still have a Michigan team at home. They get Wisconsin at home. I think they get Illinois at home. They have all, they have some winnable games. But if you want to get to where this team wants to get to, they really have to take care of business this week against two teams that they probably should beat at home. Yeah, Penn State is, if, if anyone's watched this year, they are not that hard to beat. They're, they're in the Nebraska tier is what I like to put them at for Big Ten basketball. And that's not a good tier you want to be in, especially because, I mean, the, well, Buckeyes destroyed Nebraska this year. And Penn State did have a nice win against Northwestern. Credit that Ohio State did lose to Northwestern once this year, and they almost lost twice. So Penn State did get a nice one. They're only five and six in the conference. Yeah, their record is a little smaller just because they had their COVID issues. But this Penn State team's not bad, especially in the guard play, where which should be interesting this matchup, especially because T.J. Walker is going to be limited. So we're going to see Michi Johnson have to step up a little bit because Isaiah Brockington and Miriam Jones for Penn State, the two guards, both combined for 37 against Northwestern this past week, and it's they're really fast. That that's how you like to, I like to put it. They're just really quick on the court defensively and offensively they they know what they're doing they're really smart out there they're experienced players so i think that's going to test ohio state's backcourt especially because now if cj walker has to play limited role again we could be seeing justice Hewing go up against some of the better guards on penn state some of the better players especially on penn state and that's going to make for an intriguing matchup and i think penn state it, it, i don't think it's gonna be that difficult for ohio state because i think we're gonna see the ej liddell show come again just because ej liddell has been playing well and i think that consistency is going to keep up but if Ohio State wants to be in the top tier, like you said, and attain that potentially number two or number three seed in the Big Ten Conference, this week is going to be the week where you want to go 2-0. and And Ohio State's also really close to being that top 10 ranking, especially, I think, if they can go 2-0 this week. Yeah, Michigan State's not the same Michigan State as 
we were used to seeing, but Michigan State's still Michigan State at the end of the day. They still have legit players. They still have one of the best head coaches of all time in college basketball. So I think Ohio State is going to have to capitalize, especially at home on Wednesday against Penn State. Now, I mean, this is this is the number you mentioned earlier, top five nationally in offensive efficiency for Ohio State, even with all the injuries with, you know, EJ Liddell has a bad night. OK, Dwayne Washington scores 20. Oh, Dwayne Washington has a bad night. Bad night. OK, EJ Liddell scores 20. Like they're getting scoring from all over the place. The defense is not anywhere close to that. Let's let's be clear. But this does look like a team that's going to be a tough out in March. I mean, as we said, they're doing pretty darn well right now. Seems like they're trending to maybe be getting better, a little healthier towards the end of the year. What is the ceiling for this team? Is this a Sweet 16 team? Is this an Elite Eight team? If everything breaks right, is this a Final Four team? Like, what what is the ceiling for this year's Ohio State team? Well, I think first off, being in the Big Ten is a great test to what you're going to see in March because most of the teams in March are going to be from the Big Ten. I think they're going to set a record this year for most teams from a conference, and then the Big Twelve will be uh, right behind. But I think Ohio State's a Sweet 16 to Elite Eight tier at the moment. I don't think Final Four really just because there are some really good teams in college basketball this year. Gonzaga, Baylor, they have just shown that no one's capable of beating them, and especially Gonzaga at the moment. They look unreal, but usually we say that about Gonzaga, and then Gonzaga does their thing in March. But Ohio State, I think they they have the talent, they have the depth to go Elite Eight, especially because I think if there's going to be an issue like one night when they're going up against an opponent that they're not used to, maybe let's say it's Baylor from the Big 12 or somebody just from the Big East, Villanova or something like that, and E.J. Liddell's not having his night, or Dwayne's not having his night. I think there's still shooters on this team. There's Justin Arnes, who's been knocking down threes. There's Kyle Young, who can get a double-double in a game. There's Justice Suen, who's been playing pretty well. So this team is really balanced. I think Coach Holtman and the coaching staff has really found their sweet spot with this team, and they know where to exploit matchups. And I think they've been really well at it. And when it comes down to March, I think this team's going to be really motivated because they knew going to last March that they had something special as well going in and that they were going to be around a 4-5 or five seed. And they didn't get their shot. So I think this year, if Ohio State can get a 4 seed or a 3 seed potentially, this team could go pretty deep, and I think the competition can go in their favor is where I'm thinking. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah, that's about where they're projected right now. Four seed, maybe three seed. Then that's kind of where they are in the polls right now as well, right around like 13 or so, 13, 14. So, and, you know, with with the potential to add some more wins, and they, they are uh, one of the very few teams that has four uh, first quadrant wins in the, the NCAA. They think there were eight or nine of them, and Ohio State's one of them. So, you know, that's something the committee looks at. So, that will probably help their resume as well. Matt, thank you for joining us. Uh, make sure you check out uh, Matt's podcast, Anything But Football, that he hosts with Mick Walker. There's plenty of basketball to talk about right now. Mick is also uh, down in Florida right now. He's been covering some seven-on-seven -seven football. He's actually going to be my guest on the Wednesday morning, Morning Scoop, uh, to talk about all that stuff he's seen down there. So a bunch of potential Ohio State targets, some of the best seven-on-seven -seven in the nation. So that will be a, uh, that'll be a fun chat with him. And I'm sure uh, Matt and Mick will have plenty to talk about about that on their podcast as well. So make sure you check that out. Also check out all of our other great podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Spreaker, wherever else you choose to get your podcast. Just your Buckeye Scoop to find all of those. You can subscribe right there. Also leave us a five-star rating and review. That does actually help us uh, reach a bigger audience, reach folks who are looking for a new podcast to listen to. That helps them find it. Thank you guys all for listening. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.